Hi everybody, I'm Luke Schneider and I'm the designer at Revival Productions. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the level editor and going over some of the basic functionality. Uh, there will be a series of these videos covering different subjects, so um, stick around and we'll hopefully get everything you need to get started with the level editor. Um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the overall layout. Uh, this is what you'll see when the level editor starts. Um, Get your file, edit, random view, and help menus up here. Uh, most of the action is actually in all these buttons around the, the sides. Uh, you can patch and move these things around, but I'd recommend starting with the default layout. Uh, if you move stuff around, obviously you gotta line it back up. But if you uh, decide you wanna change the layout, and then you can go ahead and save it here after you change the layout, otherwise it'll reset to the default next time you restart. Or when you exit, do exit and save layout. All right, uh, one more thing. If you want to go back to the default, just go to reset to default and it'll set everything up nicely. All right, so let's look at uh, these different panels. Uh, the first one is kind of important. This is for geometry. Um, I'm not going to go over all these functions right now, but uh, we'll cover all these eventually and the different things. I wanted to quickly go over uh, these types of inputs. Um, this is a slider label, which you can edit by clicking on, it'll go up, right click on, it goes down. If you hold and slide, it'll go left and right. Um, if you hold and slide the right mouse button, it goes up and down by a much larger value. Uh, that value just sort of depends on what the button is. And it'll highlight when you're over it, um, that only goes for this part. But uh, yeah, these are pretty easy to use. Uh, they're useful for inputting values where we sort of set what they should be and set a nice range. So you'll see these uh, over here and then some of the pop-ups. Yeah, there's one there too. All right, and then the other type are these sort of toggles. Uh, these just sort of cycle through a couple different values. Some of them, when you right click, they'll go a different direction, but some of them don't. Um, we can add functionality for the ones that don't. I like for example this one does go back and forth I can also cycle all the way through uh, usually we put the right mouse functionality it's a little bit of extra code but we put that functionality on buttons that we're using a lot of um, so yeah uh, let's go over the view options real fast uh, we have orthographic this shows uh, let me load a level here this is Backfire, probably the first challenge one level most people play. Uh, instead of doing this manually, I can also push F in a little center, or Shift F focuses the whole level. Anyway, let's go back over this. Uh, this will cycle through your different view options for the orthographic views, and that can be different than the perspective view. Uh, we'll go over some of these in more detail, but generally the defaults are pretty good of um, want wireframe in your orthographic views and wire texture in your perspective view. Uh, the layout is pretty important. Uh, this is four-way. This is what it comes up as the default, I think. Um, if not, it's probably this one. Uh, these different layouts let you sort of focus on different things. Uh, the top view is good if you really want to focus on the overhead perspective, but I usually use bottom or right for the level editing, depending on uh, what kind of monitor I'm on. Let's go back to four-way though. The background, if you like light or dark, uh, this is definitely a personal preference thing. Uh, gimbal isn't too important. It sort of just shows you the center of the world. You really need to see that. Uh, lighting, so Right now the lighting set to light, but I can also go to dark. So it has less lighting than the light setting. And then off is just no lighting at all. That only affects stuff when you're showing a, like a solid or textured. Like when you're showing solid, it's not very useful to uh, have it like this. So you can turn on the lighting, bright or dark. Um, you'll probably notice these red, uh, rectangles around the level. Those are split planes. Uh, they're on by default and you'll want to turn them off probably when you load a level if you're just editing geometry. Uh, these are important for splitting up the level and uh, 
breaking up in a different chunk so that the game will run more smoothly. And then auto center is something that uh, I don't tend to use very often, but if you're creating new geometry or you select on something, it'll auto center on that. I tend to leave that off, but if you want it, it's there. I know Dan uses that um, when he builds levels. All right, and then we have grid spacing. Uh, important in this editor, there's spacing and snap. Spacing is just the visual part, and snap is what it actually uses when it's moving stuff around. That's a snap of one right there. And then you can control where the grid shows or not at all. I usually like to stick it with the ortho. All right, over here we have entities. This is all the different ways we can edit entities. There will be properties that pop up here depending on what entity you have selected. Then we have decals. Um, this is a pretty advanced feature. That's how we create a detailed geometry on our different segments. And then texturing, which we'll do a lot of uh, coverage on as well. All right, so that is the basic layout of the editor. Uh, there are some other pop-up windows and stuff like that that we'll get to. Okay, so let's get down to mouse movement and how we use the mouse to move around. So you can see here I'm using the middle mouse button. I'm holding it down and moving it around. I can also scroll up and down to zoom in and out. Well, that's not a true zoom, but uh, I'll show you that in a second. And then in this view, middle mouse button pans around and zooms in and out. And then if you hold down control, it actually changes the FOV. Zoom way out or way in. I don't know if there's a way to reset that, but that's good enough. All right, so now I am using Alt and left mouse button to spin the view. There's another way to do that. It's hold down right and middle mouse button, and that'll let you also spin the view. So this is your basic way of getting around. Zoom in and out. Move around, spin around, all right. And another quick way to do things is if you select something, push F and it'll focus on it. If you only wanna do that in one view, do Control F. It's kinda of useful. And then again, Shift F will frame everything on all the views. All right, what else do we need to cover? All right, so another really important uh, concept to learn about are the different modes. There are four modes. There's segment. I notice the segment is orange. Segment is basically a deformed cube. It can be any uh, shape that you can stretch a cube into, but you don't want to make it a illegal shape with uh, sides that sort of overlap each other and uh, points that are ne directly next to each other. Um, side mode. It's useful for textures and decals and um, moving parts of a segment. Vertex mode lets you do more fine grain movement. And then entity mode lets you select and edit entities. You can just tell when I select them over here, it says what the entity is. This is a challenge mode level, so there's not a whole lot of different types of entities. Uh, one nice thing you can turn on show if you cycle through the show text over here in the view you can see all the different power-up types um, i usually use this with texturing on let's turn on text there it's a little more easy to read and then we can also do power-ups or robots there's no actual robots in here all these are spawns but if i were to place a robot you see the type of robot so these robots have our internal names uh, Runt A is actually the, oh, not the ogre, the goblin. But there will be a simple list of translating uh, the well, robot names into what they are in the editor. All right, so that covers mouse movement and the modes. Again, tab will also cycle through the modes. You can click on this label up here, right click go the other way. Shift tab will go the opposite direction. So let's start a new level and show you how to create a default segment and how to just build some basic geometry. Okay, so I always just start with default segments. Let's focus on that. I'm not gonna worry about the textures right now, so we're gonna turn off that solid. 
All right, so let's, we can cycle through the different sides with X or shift X. Once we create a second segment, we're going to use insert this time. We can cycle through the segments with C, U, and then if you want to go to the next segment, you can hit N. That'll that'll be a little more clear here. I want to go back to that one. Hit N. So again, I'm just using insert to create a new segment, and N here goes to the next segment on the selected side. All right, so one thing I have turned on here is side select all, which you don't want to do normally. You just want visible. All right, so let's go over more uh, segment creation. So I've been using selecting a side and pushing insert, and that creates a new segment. And I want insert advance on, on, insert advance on, because that way when I create a new segment, it automatically selects it. So um, let's go over selecting versus marking real fast while we're still talking about this so when i select something it's just clicking on it or cycling through if i want to mark something so i can mark multiple objects i push spacebar and that'll toggle the mark on my selected object or if i want to mark everything i hit shift select it'll also turn off selection for everything so if i have some objects selected like those faces shift space will un unmark all of them it can get a little confusing talking about marking versus uh, selecting, but just remember marking is blue or sort of purplish and selecting is orange or purplish. It's only purple because it's overlapping orange and blue at the same time. Or is it? I don't know. Okay, so let's go over more types of creating segments. So we've created all these, you can sort of see one, two, three, Four, five, six. You can see the total up here is six segments, and there's 28 sides. Oh, it's not updating the sides count correctly. Okay, we'll figure that out. So let's actually move some of these. So we're going to mark this side. If you want to ever modify or move something, you got to mark it first. Uh, that goes for most operations, aside from simple things like uh, some texturing types. If you mark, want to mark or move more than one thing. Okay, let's do that again. If you want to modify something, you got to mark it. Um, there are some exceptions, like uh, some of the side operations can be used uh, on just a selected side. But normally you want to mark multiple objects. So let's mark those objects. And now if we want to move them, we'll just use the, the numpad, or I can use the mouse. Let's use the mouse this time. And I move it over, and it stretches it in that direction. Now in the orthographic view, it does automatic um, sort of aligning to the perpendicular um, axes. So if I'm like this and I move it up, it moves up perfectly aligned with the, Z, the Y axis here. Now you can turn that off and snapping by holding down shift. So if I hold down shift and use the right mouse button to move this around, it's no longer attached to the grid. This is really good for doing caves, but for man-made areas, I recommend not doing that. Unless you're going to do it, and then hit Control G, which will snap it to the grid. All right, so we've just created a nice little area here. We can uh, add another segment. Let's say we want to extrude or extend this hallway some more. We'll mark those and we'll hit control insert this time instead of just insert. That creates, um, let's turn on wire solid. There we go. You can see the borders a little bit more easily. That creates three new segments. I like some. If I want to go down with this, I can do the same thing. And whatever face I have selected is which is the direction it will um, be extruding in. So if I go Select that one, it'll extrude straight down. And again, I can move those faces with the right mouse button, or I can use the numpad to move those around. You can also go in and out with the plus and minus on the numpad, but most people go. Usually you just line up with the view you want stuff around. 
Okay, so let's do one more time. This time I want to select all the faces on this side, so I'm going to hit Shift Q. That's select all the coplanar faces. Uh, it's also over here, Mark Coplanar. Let's push that button and show that it works. And then we're going to do Control Insert again, and that creates more segments. Now let's say I decide, oh, I don't actually want that one there, so I mark the segment in segment mode and hit Delete. Or if I decide, oh wait, I did want it back, let's hit Control Z. There are 16 levels of undo. Um, some operations count as more than one operation for undo's purposes. So let's say we do extrusion like that. Or there's some other advanced functions that actually count as more than one. So one other thing we can do with our insert is do shift insert. And instead of creating a straight one, it'll create a uh, segment with a default size side on the end. This is really good, like if you want to create a secret room or just a door, uh, you'll want to have a segment that's the default size, which is four by four. So we've created that, and then let's just place a door on that side. Doors have to be placed on sides. There we go, there's a door, and that's the type of the door. Hopefully we'll create a picture guide for all these different doors so you can see what they are. Although in these cases, usually you just match it up with the texture that you're trying to uh, create a secret for. All right, so we've created this nice little area. Now we're gonna save it up here to save or control S. Save your overload file. So it'll save it. And if I do new, open, and the label's there. All right. And I think that's it for this basic tutorial. We've created a real simple level. Um, if you want to see what it looks like with textures, that's it. Not very spectacular, but we'll go over texturing in another video. All right, um, the next video will be advanced geometry uh, modification. Advanced is in quotes. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.